Dear crypto community of blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to a special edition of Crypto Nights, where we take all these awesome, timeless interviews and bring them back to you in highlights. And without further ado, we're going to kick off with Vlad, a friend of ours, for him to tell us what were his favorite moments of season two. Vlad, good to see you, brother. Good to see you too. All right, Vlad, season two. Tons of crazy stuff happened in these interviews. What was your favorite pick? Oh, man, I wish I could say all of them are my favorite, you know? But if I had to choose, I would definitely give my vote to Don Tapscott. And the reason for that is it, you know, it takes an art of a dedicated mind to be able to see long term and provide a picture so that we can understand the true value behind the blockchain. Because lots of people think that blockchain is just only for finance, right? But as Don says, that's just the least where we can benefit in the financial sector. Absolutely, he's a futurist, he's an author. Don Tapscott wrote The Blockchain yeah. Revolution. His son as well, Alex Tapscott, is also preaching blockchain technology in the bigger picture, yeah. like you said, right? So. And it's very hard, as I said, like try, you know, close your eyes and vision something, try to vi create like a vision for like one minute. It's very hard, you know, but some people are really good at it. Absolutely, brother. So without further ado, you guys heard Don Tapscott, Blockchain Research Institute and the author of Blockchain Revolution will kick off with the first highlights. Check it out. Trust is not achieved through a middleman, it's achieved through collaboration and, and through cryptography. This thing has a great kind of integrity, that, which is the foundation of trust. Because trust, you know, what is trust? What is trust, yeah. You know, I asked myself that question when I wrote a previous um, book, uh, like um, 20 years ago now, uh, and it took me <laughs> took me about three months to answer it. I read everything I could on trust, and and I think I can say it in a sentence that trust is the expectation that the other party will act with integrity, that they will do the right thing, that they'll be honest that they'll be considerate of your interests and that they'll abide by their commitment. Which is the amazing thing about what Satoshi did is he created this trust protocol, protocol yeah. where I can trust you 100% because you can't be dishonest with me in a transaction. You can't not abide by your commitments, <laughs> you know, and, and um, and in the case of the murmuration, a little bird will go after a killer 25 times its size because he knows that the other birds will have its back, that they will do the right thing. Uh, Don Tapscott, that was absolutely beautiful. He's really the father figure or the granddad you wish you had. Such and a just, Don. Yeah, such a Don. And just tell you blockchain stories that'll put you to sleep. Um, but thank you so much for mentioning his name. Now, Vlad, if you had one more choice, among the entire Tom Timeless interviews on season two, who would you choose? Uh, I would give my second vote to Obi from CoinFloor. Ah. Uh, the stock to flow ratio was a new concept that he introduced to me and I'm sure to a lot of people in the crypto community. And the fact obviously that Bitcoin and gold are both finite resources. So Obi, thank you very much for that. That was really good, especially knowing that, yeah, like you said, in terms of finite supply, Bitcoin had a very clear finite supply, and for those reasons, you guys should definitely check the stock to flow ratio presented by OB from CoinFloor. Check it out right now. Gold and other precious metals are valued based on what's called the stock to flow ratio. And that's basically using the same model of valuation that um, precious metals use. So stock basically talks about the total amount of stock of that precious metal or bitcoin in this case that currently exists and the flow is the is the amount of of new uh, versions of that ore or or um, digital ore in the case of bitcoin that come into the market every year and the ratio is is the division of one by the other so uh, currently uh, silver i believe has a stock to flow ratio of about 22 so Oh, one over 22's worth of new silver enters the economy every year, is mined, etc. Gold has a stock-to-flow ratio of 62, roughly. 
at the moment, Bitcoin has a stock to flow ratio of 25 with the 12.5 Bitcoin being released every 10 minutes. It works out if you divide the total amount of Bitcoin by the new amount it being every year, roughly um, 25. Now, with the halving, that's going to double to 50. OK. Now, but what's really interesting is if you take the stock to flow ratio and map the price of Bitcoin to that stock to flow ratio over the last and now we have 10 years of data. The correlation is striking. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, so what this tells you is that although there are many other things that affect the price, when you think about it in the long term, the stock to flow ratio seems to have an incredible correlation. Now, really, this theory has only come out in the last six to eight months or so. So we really need to see how it operates for another few years to be sure. But it is really striking. Um, and if that's the case, next year with the stock to flow ratio du um, um, doubling, we'd expect the market cap to move towards close to that of gold. Now, silver's market cap is currently about 300 billion. Gold's is 8 trillion. So that's why many people believe with the next halving, the correct price of Bitcoin will tend towards the well over 1 trillion mark which could lead to a price of Bitcoin of well over 60,000 US dollars for Bitcoin. Now, there'll be a lot of volatility around that, but there's a lot of excitement for that. So the stock to flow ratio was a really cool concept, actually um, presented by Plan B, but Brother Phil, I know you've been actually filming the entire season two. What were your favorite highlights? And it's so hard to choose. You had such an epic lineup for season two. Uh, hard to top season one, um, but you've definitely done it. I'd say I'd have to probably give it to Tone Vase. Uh, absolutely epic season finale. Uh, everybody knows he's a Bitcoin maximalist and it's always fun to hear his views. And uh, yeah, just really enjoyed that one. He was really, really cool. And despite being a Bitcoin maximalist, remember him talking about the membership and some utilities that might make sense. So uh, definitely very entertaining and a very bright guy. So guys, without further ado, check out Tone Vase from the CC Forum. Great interview with lots of valuable content. Here you go. When it comes to memberships, as silly as it sounds, there could be a blockchain use there because no one has to know what clubs you are a member of. And in fact, some of those clubs don't even need to know who you are. So you can have, and that's when the use case comes in. As long as I have a token that gives me access to the membership, um, I just have to show that I have it. And I can enter somewhere. They don't need to know who I am. They don't need to know my identity. But the point is that membership token shouldn't be used as a speculative yeah, tool. You should yeah. be buying it for the purposes to of a membership. Yeah. Now, granted, there are memberships that are very valuable. There are cer certain things like, hey, we have the best club in the world. But in order to, to you know, for our members to be happy, only 1,000 people can be a member of this club. Uh, yeah. um, uh, and then you have to get one of them to sell it to you because we can only have 1,000. So yes, there is probably some speculative nature there, but I guarantee you no one is buying this membership in or for the sole purpose of reselling it later. You're buying this membership because you want it. Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Robbins is a huge sought after person. Tony Robbins has about, I think it's about 20 people or so. Maybe, I don't want to, I'm just taking a guess. Tony Robbins goes, you can go to a contract for private consulting where you have a one hour phone call with Tony Robbins once a month. So you are allowed 12 hours of talk time with Tony Robbins, one hour a month. And I believe this costs about $1 million. You pay that. And you can talk to him for one hour, once a month. So that comes out to about $85,000 per a one hour phone call. And there is a wait list to get on this uh, list to have 12, uh, one hour a month for a year. There's a wait list. So yes, that is a moment. Now, Tony Robbins doesn't have to know who you are. You should be able to buy this anonymously and have the ability to talk to Tony Robbins and he doesn't need to know who you are. But I guarantee you, no one is buying this 
for speculation yeah, that. to then resell it. <laughs> it just makes no sense, right? You're buying it for the privilege of being one of those members and using that service. So yes, I do see a little bit of a use case in the blockchain uh, for that. Yeah, Tone Vey is definitely a very entertaining guy. Love his accent, reminds me of the good old days in New York. But brother, you saw every interview from multiple angles, multiple cameras. If you had to pick your very best interview. Um, maybe I'm just a fanboy, but I'd probably say Roger Ver was my favorite interview. I think um, it's nice to see a little bit of humility from Roger, talking about how you know, if something better than Bitcoin Cash or better than Bitcoin comes out, he'd support that as well because, you know, he's just a fan of the technology and he wants to support what's best. And I think that's pretty admirable, really. Yeah, I love it when guys like hardcore, like Roger Ver, Jiu Jitsu and his strong personality is not afraid to show a little bit of vulnerability, right? Show that right. he's human after all. Definitely a great interview. And speaking of which, guys, next up, our highlight is with Roger Ver from Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin.com. Check it out. It was a really good interview. The more economics I studied, the more I realized that anytime anybody buys or sells anything with anybody, both people are richer after the trade happens, otherwise the trade wouldn't happen. So anytime you buy you know, anything from Starbucks, if you buy some coffee from them, it's because you value the coffee more than the money you pay them. And Starbucks values the money that they get from you more than they value the coffee. So after the trade happens, Starbucks is richer because they have the money that they value it more than the coffee. And you're richer because you have the coffee that you value more than the money that you gave them. So both people are better off after the trade happens. So if we can build tools and systems that allow more people around the world to be able to trade with more people, everybody becomes richer after the trade's happening. Otherwise, those trades wouldn't take place. So when Bitcoin came along, I saw it as this tool to enable more people to be able to trade with more other people around the world. Well, that makes everybody all over the entire planet richer. It makes the entire world a better place for everybody. So who doesn't want to live in a better world than the one we have today? Well, the best tool to help make that happen is, is digital currencies and cryptocurrencies that can be used for payments to buy and sell things for people around the world. And that's why I got involved uh, you know, way back in 2011 when Bitcoin was less than a dollar each. All right, guys, as you know, CryptoNights is a no BS blockchain channel, but a lot of people are kind of saying it's controversial to have someone like Craig Wright on the show. So I'd love to hear your views. I mean, I like the interview. I think you know, Craig Wright's obviously a pretty smart guy. and I think he's got a lot to say and he obviously understands the technology, whether he is or isn't Satoshi. I think let's not talk about it, but you know, who's to say whose voice should or shouldn't be heard in the community? Yeah, there's a famous quote that uh, freedom is being able to tell people what they do not want to hear. That is uh, nice. Craig Wright to a T. You know, the, the whole ethos of Bitcoin is censorship resistance. So, yeah, I say let the guy, let the guy talk. He's, a, he's an interesting guy to listen to. I don't know if everybody might not agree with what he has to say, but uh, yeah, I think he was a really good interview. You guys summed it up really well. Vlad, how about yourself? Do you agree? Um, yes. At the end of the day, we all need to have a bad guy, you know, so we can all point our fingers and say that's the bad guy. And it's good to have a controversial figure in the space and hear their point of view, whether it's Craig Wright or somebody else. It's a really good point. And just like you guys were saying, first of all, being a smart guy, he was there in the very early days. He was CC'd in the emails with Satoshi Nakamoto. So without a doubt, he helped with proof of work. So he understands the tech. And like you're saying, as a channel, I don't think we should be vetting people. I think we should always stay neutral. And really, we promised that. Do you remember that in the trailer? The first that. trailer, we said that we're going to invite controversial figures or people with differing opinions so that the viewer himself or herself can make their own opinion. No? Does that make yeah, sense? It's up to the viewers to decide. Anything else that you guys would add? Uh, I no, think that's it. Covered it. I Bring mean, on the controversial speakers, I say. Yeah. Yeah. Once Trump for season two. <laughs> <laughs> season three. Season three. <laughs> Trump would be awesome. And speaking of which, guys, there was some interesting stuff related to Craig Wright, and he said some positive things, such as showing respect to Hal Finney, one of the guys who's supposedly behind Satoshi Nakamoto. So it's not all about dark stuff. There was some good stuff as well. And next season, season three. Bring it, it on, bring it yeah, on. Yeah, bring it on, man. So stay tuned, guys, for season three. We're going to come back with great content. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you guys very soon. When we have an honest, open system, it's not the government can do things to us.
because the government are also recorded. Imagine every time a policeman or a politician wants to take a bribe, there's a record. Imagine every time that someone wants illegal campaign funds, there's a record. Imagine a bunch of Democrats can't ever lose emails ever again because there's records. That's how blockchain will change things. That's scary to a lot of governments. That's scary to a lot of people. It's not the bad thing people want. It's actually an honest, open system where we hold government, banks, accountants, lawyers, everyone accountable.